Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody had a good uh, weekend. Hope everybody had a great first week of 2024. We'll get to that uh, in a second. If you are brand new to the channel, thank you very much for uh, tuning in, spending a couple of minutes with us. Uh, if you like the content, all we ask guys at the start of every video, just like uh, take a second to like the video, share, chart, you know, share, comment, all that good stuff. And that's all we uh, ask for. And hopefully you guys will continue to get uh, pretty good value on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, before we go on to uh, this video, uh, Kenyon posted uh, a video Friday afternoon. I don't know if a lot of you guys uh, saw it. Um, it's a video uh, literally right before this one. If you go into our channel... Uh, we did a summer series of different topics uh, throughout a trader's journey, throughout a trader's development. Um, this past Friday, Kenyon posted a video on the psychological aspects of sizing up and sizing down. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very big, gray area. Unfortunately, a lot of new traders, they don't pay attention to and they believe that their first, uh, you know, their first role in this market is to try to make as much money as fast as possible, but they don't realize that your account size and your experience level and your decision making is based on the emotional ability to handle your tier size. And so we did a video. Uh, this is, you know, this was in the summertime. We have a whole series of videos that we did uh, different topics. So after you check out this video, if you haven't done so uh, already, it's about an hour. Uh, it's about an hour long discussion, but it's really, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, and it really should help a lot of you guys, especially new guys, uh, to kind of, uh, start, you know, really thinking about your position sizing. I give you guys a little bit of, uh, kind of tips to kind of get through, uh, those mental hurdles. So that's it. So hopefully you'll like that as well. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about this past week. Obviously 2023 was an absolute, uh, stellar year for the markets, especially technology stocks. 54% on the Qs is pretty damn good, right? Uh, we talked about different areas of support that the bulls needed to hold uh, before things got a little bit dicey. And you know, if you've been watching this video just in the last, you know, just in the last two weeks, you know, you don't have to go back to even more than that. We discussed very, very specific levels that if you guys uh, wrote down, you could have really, you know, not only taken advantage of, but really. Uh, position yourself properly for what that happens next. And we, we started the year uh, on this $400 level, which is the rising 20-day uh, support on the QQQs. We talked about the importance of the rising 20-day, as you can see here, every single time uh, since, you know, just going back a little while, uh, every single time the NASDAQ hit the 20-day moving average, it bounces, right? It hit the 20-day bounce, bounce, bounce. And it bounced on uh, January the 2nd, which was the first day back, for the new year and then the next day it took it out and the point was once we started building below that 400 level and we started uh taking down that 400 level and once was support and now is resistance or supply and demand which i like to call uh it's it, it's a it was a sell signal right it was a sell signal and i still believe when you go back to three four videos i still believe the longer we stay below that 400 level there's a high probability that we probably will see this 390 on uh, next support zone uh, or next demand zone uh, for where the bulls should uh, then have another uh, point of reference. And it was very, very important. The key for last week, and if you look at the numbers, you know, they're not going to stand out a lot. And let me tell you why in a second. If you look at the first week's uh, tallies, the Dow Jones was down uh, six tenths of a percent, the SPX was down one and a half percent, and the NASDAQ composite was down. 3.3%. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a pretty big loss for the week, but again, 54% the previous year. That's why I kept on reiterating the point. Even if we have a back test, you know, don't jump off the cliff. Don't start to talk about the sky is falling. We're going to crash. It's just as of right now, this entire formation is still way, way in the bullish cycle. We're just getting an interval where we could take advantage of the downside. 
Another thing we talked about last week, once we started building below the 20-day moving average, is how many names in the technology sector were going to test their 50-day moving average. And that's the theme kind of going into um, Monday session or Tuesday session. Um, the one takeaway we have to look at what we've seen this week, we did attempt a rally on Friday. And everything, we'll get to the pivots in a second. It was a really great morning, right? Tech, ma tech names went really nuts. The problem was the morning was over and the queues got rejected on the previous day's channel and they just sold off. If you look at the 60-minute view, right? They had a big, big run in the morning. And look, again, this is kind of what I'm talking about, understanding where your supply and demand zones are, right? The queues hit, the supply zone perfectly and literally faded about two and a half points. So again, guys, it's super important. I, I know a lot of new traders, you know, they'll look at all these lines and go, oh, they're so irrelevant. But but if again, if you look, if, you're, if your eyes don't lie and you can see where stocks get rejected, you reject it, you'll really understand why the all these lines make so much sense. Uh, you know, you can see a rejection of supply, rejection of supply, rejection of supply, rejection of supply. So if you're trading blind and you don't understand these areas of point of reference, of, of course, you're going to get caught off guard. Of course, you're going to get the rug pull under you because you're, you're, you're buying stock into supply. Emotional buyers are meeting technical sellers and vice versa. So when you go look at what's happening potentially uh, this week, and this is why it's so important, this is why the queues uh, potentially have another you know five and a half, six points down, you start looking at the mega cap names. And we talked about last week how a lot of names were going to start testing their 50-day moving average. That's exactly what happened, right? If you look at Amazon, Amazon this week, Tested perfectly the 50-day moving average. Tesla, which we had a great bounce on Tesla on Friday off the 50-day, but the point is Tesla tested its 50-day. Microsoft, right? Look what happened. Tested its 50-day. So if these stocks start losing the 50-day moving average, it's going to be a problem, right? Now we have a clear bias. We have a clear point of reference going into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday session that if Tesla, Microsoft, um, Amazon. And there's a there's a bunch of other names, but you know those three uh, represent the the ten names that I trade. If they start losing the 50 day moving average, you know that's gonna be a problem for them. They're, it's going to start a, a, a more aggressive of a sell signal. And if you are long these stocks, at least for the short term, again I don't know what's gonna happen down the line, but at least for the short term, if they start losing, especially close uh, below the 50 day moving average, uh, there is going to be a two, three, four potentially a week, week and a half worth of selling. Again, are they going to go straight down? Absolutely not. But the point is supply is a very, very important area. Once support gets lost, that support becomes supply. And you can see here by the cues, right? We're below the 20 day moving average for four consecutive days, three consecutive days. And guess what? They just can't get above supply. And that's the most important part. And this is why we're going to continue to drift lower until the bulls reclaim back that 400 level. And that's a very, very important point. A lot of times you're, you're not going to see or be affected of what's going on here just because people are still buying dips and, and they have every right to be buying dips. Because again, if you look at the whole formation of the NASDAQ 100, this is still super duper bullish. Again, where this thing becomes bearish or at least the sell, sell signal, I don't want to use the word bearish, where the buyers, when you'll, you'll start to see a, a buyer's strike once you start losing the 50 day, just like all those on the individual stocks I just mentioned. So the, as long as the queues close above 387, which again, we're, we're 10 points, we're still 10 points above. This is just a preliminary conversation to kind of get your brain focused in case it happens. But any close below the 50 day uh, moving average, just like with Tesla, Microsoft and Amazon, if that happens with the NASDAQ 100, it will uh, drag everything back. But again, let's take it one day at a time, uh, one trade uh, at a time uh, as well. Uh, data, you know, jobs data came out this week, more uh, notes from the Fed. They kind of reiterated what they talked about in the last FOMC session uh, with their minutes. You know, they're still very cloak and dagger about a potential rate cut or where they're actually going to have it. Uh, there's a lot of speculation. There's a lot of innuendos, but there's not really concentrated dates that, hey, this is going to be the first you know, March is going to be the first, uh, you know, FOMC that we're going to do it. And blah, blah. it's not like that. It's a lot of speculation. This is why we're start, still seeing a, a lot of up and down, up and down in the market. But the formation, the general formation as we enter Monday is below. We're going to start Monday, the fourth day uh, below the 20 day moving average. And again, if you believe in the theory of supply and supply and demand and demand, and that's what the whole PS60 theory is, then the next 
soft landing, the same way the first soft landing was when we lost the 10 day was the 20. Well, the next soft landing is this rough, roughly this 390 area on the QQQ. So let's talk about let's talk about our Friday session. Um, the market, you know, gap down after you know, gap down after um, I believe I think I think it was the jobs data. Uh, and they started rallying. And, you know, the bulls actually gave an absolutely phenomenal job. If you traded uh, Friday's session, you know how incredibly uh, aggressive the majority of uh, the mega cap technology names were. And they really went crazy. They really did. But once the NASDAQ then got rejected on lower highs on the 20-day supply once again and failed to reclaim the previous day's channel, everything got pulled. And this is how, why we're, again, marching to the downside going into uh, Monday's session for the majority of names, not everything, but the majority of names. So let's talk about, uh, you know, pretty much, you know, very, very aggressive session. Congratulations, guys, for you guys traded on Friday. Uh, NVIDIA 485 needs to build. Uh, NVIDIA got a price target upgrade. Uh, NVIDIA got a price, uh, I forgot who it was, but they gave, somebody gave it a $690 uh, price target. Uh, as you can see here, it took out the 485. That was the pivot here, as you can see, right? 485 needs to build so it took out this 485 and just went absolutely crazy put up a ten dollar candle into this 95 supply obviously the key level of the video assuming the market uh doesn't you know doesn't go lower is still going to be above this channel here above this december channel if it could get above this december channel eventually it has to start testing its last year's highs we'll see you know we'll see if, if it gets strong enough but boy oh boy in, incredible move on the video from that 485 level Peloton, right? Usually not a name, uh, not a name we focus on, but this had a really nice looking channel, uh, and it did what it had to do. It had a really, really nice move. Six sixty eight uh, needs to build. Here was uh, Peloton, right? So it took out the six sixty eight level, which was the high from December fourteenth. And again, this is where we talk about understanding these silly little lines, right? If you don't know that silly little line, well, it got stopped exactly where it was supposed to right into supply, but beautiful move from 668 uh, into the 720s, pretty much on one straight line. You can see it pretty much on one straight line here. So congratulations for you guys uh, who caught that as well. Uh, Amazon, uh, again, continues to be support, never got there, but guys, watch Amazon. You know, it's one of the three names we talked about. If this thing starts losing support, it's going to get hit. Uh, AMD, 137.70 needs to build. I also believe they got upgraded price target as well. So it took out the 17770. Again, look where it stopped. The next supply. Emotional buyers came in and technical sellers won. But boy, oh boy, look at this move. Uh 13770 all the way up to 141 before it got rejected into the 10-day supply. Gorgeous move there uh as well. Uh QS never got there. And the last one was uh Meta. Meta 4820 uh needs to build. Meta went absolutely nuts. So uh, Meta took out this whole 4820, uh, the whole channel, and traded all the way up to 53.50. If, if again, if the market holds up fairly well and starts confirming Friday's uh, channel, you know, Meta and Nvidia are clean, right? They're clean. A lot of the other names are, are getting close to their 50-day support, but you know, Meta and uh, Nvidia are pretty clean if they can start confirming uh, Friday's channel as well. So we we have a very unique uh, situation right now that that a lot of the mega cap names are kind of trending down to the 50-day moving average and going to be a big line in the sand. And then you have several that look like they're actually trying to bust out, Meta, AMD, uh, and NVIDIA. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see if the bulls can pull up those stocks that are close to the 50 or can those barely, you know, the, those names that are trending down are going to start dragging everything down. It's going to be a very, very interesting uh, start to the week. But the most, most important part, and we say all the time, we're going to be ready for both sides. I don't care which side confirms. The point is have measured potential ready on the long side, have measured potential ready on the short side, and you don't have to guess. Just see which side confirms first. Guys, God bless. Have a great remainder of your Sunday, and I'll see you all in the field tomorrow. Take care.